Hello, in this video I will be talking about the Oncotype DX test that is done on breast cancer primary tumors. Before I go on, I'd love to have you subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out new content, so there's always something new to watch. So what is the Oncotype DX test? How is it done? What does it mean? And how do we use the results to offer treatment to different people? So the Oncotype DX is actually the brand name for something that we refer to as a 21 gene assay. And the, I'm using the brand name because that's what people are usually seeing when they read about this test or when you see it in your medical records. But I may also call it the 21 gene assay. So when we talk about genetic testing, we're generally talking about a person being tested to see if they have an inherited susceptibility to breast and other cancers. What we're talking about with the 21 gene assay is a different kind of test. This is not done on the person. It doesn't require any additional testing or blood draws or anything being done to your body. Rather, this is a genomic assay that looks at the genes in the tumor, not the genes in the person. So this is very different from genetic testing. You might want to check out our video about genetic testing in people with breast cancer. So a genomic test is done looking at the genes and the level of expression of genes in the tumor itself. So this test can be done on a core biopsy, but more often it's done when the tumor's been removed and sent to the pathology lab. And we're looking at sort of the personality of a tumor in addition to grade and hormone receptor status and HER2 status. The 21 gene assay, or Oncotype DX, is done to get a better sense of the tumor's prognosis and also it can help us predict whether there will be benefit from chemotherapy or not. So can this test be done in everybody? No, the test is done in people whose tumors have the estrogen and progesterone receptors, do not have the HER2 protein or overexpression of the HER2 oncogene, and in people with stages one or two breast cancer, meaning that their lymph nodes, only one, two, or three lymph nodes are positive. More often, you'll see this done in people with negative lymph nodes. Again, I'll review that again. People with negative nodes are one, two, or three lymph nodes that are estrogen and progesterone receptor positive and that are HER2 negative, not low HER2 or HER2 positive, but HER2 negative. The other requirement is that the person would consider getting chemotherapy. If you're somebody who said, I'm not getting chemotherapy no matter what, or you have other serious medical conditions that make chemotherapy not in your best interest, then we wouldn't do this test. So this test is done to see if chemotherapy will help. In somebody who's ambivalent about chemotherapy, it can be a very helpful test because it can show you the extent of benefit that you can derive from getting chemotherapy. So it's often the case that we'll do this in people who are really torn about whether or not to get chemotherapy, or in people who have lower risk disease and we wanna see will chemotherapy help. So this test is done on the primary tumor. It's sent away after insurance coverage is assured. The test itself costs more than most people want to pay out of pocket, and most insurance will pay for it, but we do get the approval first, so you're not stuck with a bill. In the unlikely event it's not covered by insurance, the company will work to set up a payment plan so that you can still have access to this test. Once the tumor is sent away for the test, it can take 10 to 14 days for the test to come back. And then when it comes back, there's a printed report and a score. So the score goes from zero to 100. And again, it's a sum and weighting of different genes that we see in the tumor. So I won't go into that. It's fairly high level. It's been validated as both prognostic and predictive of benefit. 
um, from chemotherapy, and the score will come back low, medium, or high. And the cutoffs are different for pre- and postmenopausal women based on the results from a study that showed that even lower scores may predict benefit for premenopausal women. So I'm not giving the specific cutoffs, plus it's possible that they'll change by the time you're watching this video. Let's talk about the easy cases. If the score is low, it shows that there's a low risk of recurrence and that chemotherapy will not improve that prognosis. So chemotherapy would not be given, endocrine therapy would be given with or without radiation therapy, if, depending on the type of surgery that you have. If it comes back high risk, that would tell you, yes, there's a benefit from chemotherapy, that chemotherapy will markedly reduce the risk of recurrence, both in the breast and elsewhere in the body. Most people with a high chemotherapy score do proceed to chemotherapy, not because they're frightened about that high risk, but because they see that this test says chemotherapy will actually work for them. Now the middle case is really difficult and it's almost as if you didn't have the test at all. And in the case of moderate risk, it depends, is it closer to low, is it closer to high? What's your preference? Are there other factors that make chemotherapy a good idea or not so good idea? So that's really a conversation that you'll have with your medical team, in particular, your medical oncologist. Most of the time, scores come back low or medium. We tend not to send, we're not surprised when the scores come back high. In tumors that are estrogen and progesterone receptor positive and HER2 negative that have a high grade, like grade three, and you might wanna check out our video on grade three, those tumors are more likely to come back high risk. And so in somebody who's ambivalent about chemotherapy, the test might be done and they've already been told this is a higher risk tumor. So it can be really helpful for somebody who's really torn about getting chemotherapy. I hope this has been helpful to you. I know I've covered a lot. Drop a comment or question below. We try to get back to those within a couple weeks. Please be kind and uh, thanks for watching.